Hey everyone, and welcome to another video. Today I want to take a few minutes and talk about a different kind of interaction that we really only see in Commander, and that's forcing your opponents to make decisions for you. This video idea came to me when I was building Nikia Gruel Stompy and rediscovered an old favorite card of mine, Nessian Wilds Ravager. So for four generic, two green, uh, you get a 6-6 Hydra with Tribute 6. For those of you who don't know, Tribute is a mechanic where when the creature enters the battlefield, an opponent chooses whether they put a predetermined number of plus one plus one counters, uh, in this case it is six, or if the tribute wasn't paid and you don't get those plus one counters, there's an effect that goes off. Uh, with Nessian Wilds Ravager, you get to fight another target creature. While definitely not the strongest card in the game, it can definitely be a good political tool if you know how to cut a deal with your opponents, and you can kind of treat it like creature removal since most things, like commanders, will die and lose to a fight with a 6-6. After looking around at other tribute cards, I was unsurprisingly disappointed that there's only two semi-playable cards with this mechanic. <laughs> One of them being Nessian Wilds Ravager and the other being Oracle of Bones. Here we have two generic Red Red for a 3-1 Minotaur Shaman with Haste that has Tribute 2. When it enters the battlefield, tribute wasn't paid, you may cast an instant or sorcery card from your hand without paying its mana cost. Keep in mind that I say semi-playable card. Um, <laughs> it only seems to show up in Minotaur tribal decks, and I'm not exactly sure people are letting them cast a card like Insurrection for free. All that to say that there are much better versions of this mechanic that we've seen elsewhere, particularly in conspiracy sets, and it does make me sad that we probably won't see tribute again, but... It is what it is. I'm sure a few of you have already been thinking, yeah, yeah, just get to expropriate already. And while I was working on it, I don't think that these cards have to be game-ending bombs in order to be playable. Expropriate is a really powerful card, I think we all know that. If you cast it, you should probably be just winning the game on the spot, but that's not exactly what I'm here to talk about. A perfect example of this kind of card is Factor Fiction. For those of you who don't know, it's three and a blue for an instant. Reveal the top five cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put one pile in your hand and the other into your yard. Even if you play this card and your enemy number one, digging five cards deep is fantastic, almost ensuring that you'll get something good. Add on to that that you can cut deals with opponents, which is really its true purpose in my head, to get what you want. And that makes for an interesting very functional, and most of all, fun card to play. Factor Fiction is really only the tip of the iceberg, too, when it comes to this category. Watsi's R&D unofficially calls this mechanic Divi, and I think it fits perfectly into the Commander format. There's Realms Uncharted, so two and a green for an instant. Search your library for four land cards with different names and reveal them. An opponent chooses two of those cards, put the chosen cards into your graveyard, and the rest into your hand. Shuffle your library. While not technically ramp, it does let you grab any land from your deck. So, playing Voltron, you can get that Rogue's Passage. The drawbacks to this card already have workarounds that are commander staples, like Azusa to get those lands out of your hand onto the battlefield, or Crucible of Worlds to play those lands that you had to ditch. In a 4 or 5 color strategy, especially a lands matter like Omnath, I would totally throw this card in, even for just good fixing. Next up we have Unesh, Krau Sphinx Sovereign, and Sphinx of Uthun. These are 5 blue blue and 4 blue blue respectively, and they are fact or fiction on legs, or wings. Since these cards are creatures, they can put in a ton of work in a blink deck and be great value engines with cards like Brago or Conjurer's Closet. I think that's kind of why I personally like the tribute mechanic so much, because it being on a creature uh, will let you use it multiple times, whether you're reanimating or blinking or using something like Panharmonicon or Yarok to get these effects multiple times. Then they become efficient, you know. Um, seven mana for a factor fiction really isn't that good, but seven mana to factor fiction three or four times, yeah, well now we're talking about really good value. Then we have Do or Die, which might be my personal favorite out of this entire video. One on a black for a sorcery, separate all creatures target players controls into two face-up piles. 
destroy all creatures in the pile of that player's choice, they can't be regenerated. In my opinion, two mana to kill multiple creatures is very, very strong. You know, uh, in a lot of situations, you can force players to decide if they want to kill off their commander or kill off the cards that are enabling their commander. And it's a win-win either way. The ceiling on this card is pretty high, and you can even use it on yourself if <laughs> you're in a sacrifice theme, which might be the best way to use this card. I don't know. Sticking on the theme of black, Boneyard Parlay is another Divi card that even got printed in a pre-con. Exile up to five target creature cards from graveyards, and opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put all cards from the pile of your choice onto the battlefield under your control, and the rest into their owner's graveyards. Five creatures across all graveyards is going to be pretty easy to hit once you have seven mana. So have fun grabbing your opponent's bombs and just beating them over the head with them. The original Boneyard Parlay comes to us all the way from Invasion, and that would be Death or Glory. So, four generic and a white for a sorcery. Separate all creature cards in your graveyard into two face-up piles. Remove the pile of an opponent's choice from the game, and return the other to play. So, you do have to exile half of your graveyard, but I think some strategies really don't mind. You know, um, I wouldn't necessarily put this in a reanimator deck i mean you definitely can but you're going to be losing a lot of targets i think that this card is a great backup in case you get board wiped you know something like a um non-token humans deck where you're going really wide casting a lot of these cheap creatures well for five mana you can get half of them back when you probably weren't going to be getting them back anyways outside of something like a sun titan maybe Wizards has even come back to this mechanic pretty recently in Ikoria with Emergent Ultimatum. Two black, three green, two blue, sorcery. Search your library for up to three monocolored cards with different names and exile them. An opponent chooses one of those cards. Shuffle that card into your library. You may cast the other cards without paying their mana costs. Exile Emergent Ultimatum. So, if you wanted to be really mean, what you can do here is you could just grab three creators. Uh... <laughs> I don't know if I would be doing that. I don't know if my opponents want to play against that. I might just be grabbing my Nessian Wilds Ravager. So if you find this mechanic really interesting, this Divi mechanic, make your opponent choose something, Atris Oracle of Half-Truths is a commander option. So two and Demir colors for a human advisor 3-2 with Menace. When Atris, Oracle of Half-Truths, enters the battlefield, target opponent looks at the top three cards of your library and separates them into a face-down pile and a face-up pile. Put one pile into your hand and the other into the graveyard. Definitely a really interesting mechanic, especially because you don't always know what you're getting. Uh, and it's not a body, so it is a repeatable effect. And I think the colors fit really well for a lot of the cards that I've talked about or will be talking about. So if this really interests you, keep it in mind. Moving on to conspiracy sets, we get a mechanic that would have never really made it into a standard set, uh, but I love it. It's Will of the Council and Council's Dilemma. So this mechanic is basically voting. So starting with you, each player votes for one of two options. Some cards will trigger an effect for each vote, and some cards will check to see which option got the most votes and have an effect based on that. Starting with a card everyone can play is Coercive Portal. So, four generic for an artifact, Will of the Council, at the beginning of your upkeep, starting with you, each player votes for Carnage or Homage. If Carnage gets more votes, sacrifice Coercive Portal and destroy all non-land permanents. If Homage gets more votes or the vote is tied, draw a card. This card really hits all the marks for me. Uh, you know, it gives you value, gives people options for what they want to do, and it solves a problem. Usually, this will just draw you cards, but if things are getting bad, the board's going to get wiped. And board wipes are necessary. I don't think they're a bad thing in EDH. They're often a welcome sight when someone's getting out of hand. If everyone is setting up and feeling good, you're just going to draw a few extra cards, and you'll still be happy with your play. Next up is Council's Judgment. This is one of the more popular cards, and it can go in a lot of directions. So, for a generic and two white, you get a sorcery that says, Will of the Council. Starting with you, each player votes for a non-land permanent you don't control. 
exile each permanent with the most votes or tied for the most votes. So this could really hit all three players. And that might be the best part is that since no one can pick you, everyone's just going to be going after each other and getting rid of their key pieces and it'll put you ahead. I think this card is fantastic. Even in a deck that isn't focused on this voting theme, I think it's definitely still worth playing. Next up, we have Split Decision. So for one in a blue, we get an instant that says Will of the Council. Choose target instant or sorcery spell. Starting with you, each player votes for denial or duplication. If denial gets more votes, counter that spell. If duplication gets more votes or the vote is tied, copy the spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. So a situation that came to mind that is a little niche was if someone cast a early ramp spell like Kodama's Reach. All you need is two votes here for duplication. And in most situations, the player who's trying to ramp really wants that ramp, and you're just going to be copying that Kodama's Reach for two mana. Or you're going to put the green player back at speed with the rest of the table. The other situation I can think of is when someone else plays a bomb, like Cyclonic Rift, one of the most popular blue cards, it's either stopped because no one wants to get everything bounced to their board, or it's a total board reset. I don't know if this card is the most playable, but I definitely thought it was worth mentioning and is definitely still interesting. Finally, let's talk about the big spells. As I mentioned before, Expropriate is easily the best card that I will mention today and is a true game ender, but I think we all already knew that. However, Savala Stampede is another great card. No matter which way it goes, if you're playing a Timmy deck that likes big creatures, I think this card is a perfect fit. This card easily pays for itself if you have just one 6-drop in hand. Because after that, you're just going plus. So, specifically for this voting mechanic, there are some enablers if you're like dead set on playing this. There's not a lot but I definitely thought that they were worth mentioning. So we have Ballot Broker, uh, two and a white, two, three human advisor. While voting, you may vote an additional time. And we have Brago's Representative, which is basically the same card, but it's a one, four. So I guess it doesn't die to bolt. These two cards uh, will definitely help you. You know, they'll definitely push you over the edge on those cards where one of two options happens or it'll get you multiple triggers of the effect that you want on certain other cards. Finally, we have the spiciest card in the video, Illusion of Choice. Man, four extra turns with Expropriate? I'd love to see it. I mean, hell, you could even get six if you have Ballot Broker and Brago's Representative on the field while you're casting your Expropriate. I mean, it's you get six extra turns. It's, it's ridiculous. If someone actually pulls this off, please let me know. I would absolutely love to see this. With all the cards that I've talked about today, I think we might have enough playable ones for a sub-theme in a politics deck. So, who's in the command zone? Like I mentioned earlier, Atris is definitely an option, but I think there's two other options. Queen March as it comes to mind, and I think she would be great because she is the politics commander. However, we are missing blue. So in that case, I would go for Kess Dissident Mage. This is great because you get to reuse all of those goofy will of the council and <laughs> council's dilemmas cards that you already played and just have a lot of shenanigans. So do I think that any of these mechanics we've discussed are worth returning to? I mean, sure. I think Watsia has done a pretty solid job of throwing these cards in Commander products. Uh, like I said, Boneyard Parlay was in a pre-con. Magister of Worth is a card that I didn't really get to, but it was printed recently in Commander 2021. So I think we've seen Watsi not overdo it with these cards, um, and I think they're at a pretty good pace. Maybe the Lord of the Rings set would be a good time to make a new version of the Council's Dilemma. I don't know, something to do with the Fellowship of the Ring? <laughs> I don't know, I'm, <laughs> I'm not super sure about that, so let me know what you think. 
Anyways, I hope you found a card or two that you can use uh, or just something that you found interesting. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.